connection. We need family. We need relationships, right? The world is so disconnected. But in, in God's family, we're a family, and we want to stay connected. So right now, um, I have the honor and privilege to introduce Joshua and Janet Mills and their beautiful family. We have Liberty and Legacy. Can, you want to stand, everybody? <clears throat> we, we, we had the privilege of getting to know Joshua 2016 when the fire and glory outpouring began. <clears throat> and we just love this family, this glory couple. Man, I've experienced things in his meetings I never experienced in all my walk in Christ. Now that's pretty amazing because I've been saved and baptized in the Holy Spirit since I was 16. Wow. So that is amazing. But <clears throat> he's just such a carrier of God's glory. And you're gonna experience it this morning and I don't wanna waste his time. So come on up here, please. Good morning, everyone. We're so blessed and honored to be here. Um, we're just missing one this time, our son Lincoln. Um, he's almost 19, so he's a working man now and a busy man, so he's holding the fort down up in Canada. But we're so blessed to be here, and it's such an honor, and I can feel this divine exchange taking place today where he's literally lifting off heavy weights yes. and depositing a heavy glory. Thank so just Lord. receive of his beautiful Thank divine Jesus. exchange this morning. He has something new and fresh for you, amen. And last time we were here, it was quite a while ago, little Legacy was just a baby. Now she's five. Legacy, do you want to say anything? No. <laughs> I don't she's shy. <laughs> she's not shy. And Liberty, Liberty was here, I believe, last year. And yeah. so Liberty's eight, almost nine. And do you want to say anything, honey? Hi. <laughs> there you go. Hi. God bless you this morning. Awesome. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Pastor Teresa and Pastor Daniel, if you're watching online. Thank you for opening up the pulpit for us to come and be with you this morning. It is a great joy for us to be here in San Diego County. Um, Janet and I actually began our life together here in San Diego. When we first got married, our very first apartment was here in San Diego. And some of the very first ministry experiences I had as a 19-year-old, um, just real green, kind of being welcomed onto the road by an evangelist, that all began here in San Diego County. So out in El Cajon and then the revival, um, we ended up moving over to Santee. And so we danced kind of all over this county back and forth and i can tell you this that god loves san diego there is no doubt about it don't believe the devil's lies yeah don't believe the devil's lies when he tells you that you know well you know god can't do this here god can't do that there listen there is no situation that is too impossible there's no place that's too difficult i'm telling you god wants to move all over san diego with such revival glory god is wanting to pour out his spirit in an unlimited way unlimited measure this morning pastor Teresa mentioned the scripture that's found in malachi and part of that scripture you know it says that god will open up the windows of heaven and we so quickly read over that and we think well that would be nice you know if a little window opened a little window of blessing opened in my life that would be nice but what we have to realize is that when the bible speaks about windows when the bible speaks about doorways when the bible speaks about gates it's speaking about portals and not just any kind of portal it's speaking about power portals when god is involved there is great power that comes on the scene hallelujah there is no thing nothing that is too difficult for our God. I'm telling you this, when God begins to open up windows, the Bible says it like this, he will pour out a blessing to such a degree that you cannot even contain it all. There is such a flow of divine power that's released from the portals of God that are opening over your life, that are opening in this place, that are opening over this church and this ministry, that are opening over this region. When the power of God begins to flow through the open portal, there is unlimited blessing. Unlimited. What does unlimited blessing look like? It means that in any area of your life, whether it be spiritual, whether it be emotional, whether it be physical, whether it be financial, whether it be relational, every area of your life, 
being satisfied by the divine supply of heaven. Oh, never living in any kind of lack again. Somebody say, I'm wanting to live in that realm. Come on, I want to live in that realm. I want to live, God, under the spout where the glory comes out. God, this is where I want to position my life. I want to be in such divine unity with you, such synchronization with your spirit, that I would never have to live another day in lack, insufficiency, oh, in debt. But Lord, living under the open heaven of divine provision. Lord, you promised us in your word that you shall supply for all of our need according to your riches in heavenly glory. I mean, just shut your eyes and think about the riches of heavenly glory. What does it feel like? What does it look like? What does it sound like? What is the weight of heavenly riches? What is the weight? It's the weight of blessing. The Bible says that the blessing of the Lord it makes you rich and he adds no sorrow with it. Some may say there's divine provision that's moving into my life today from an open power portal. The windows of heaven open wide so that God's divine supply begins to flow into my life in every way, every situation every circumstance satisfied by the abundance of God hallelujah now lift up your hands into that realm lift up your hands lift up your hands in that realm and I want you to feel the weight of God's goodness coming upon you and when you feel the weight of God there is no sorrow in it there is no ungodly heaviness in it there is no burden in it but when you begin to feel the weight of God's glory flowing over your life, I'm telling you, it's filled with blessing. It's filled with goodness. What God is pouring out is filled with deliverance. It's filled with healing. It's filled with salvation for you and your household. It's filled with every kind of miracle that you need. It's filled with signs and with wonders, with divine wisdom and revelation. It's filled with truth and impartation. Lord, I thank you for the weight of your glory that meets us in this place right now. Lord, we give to you every need, every place that we hurt, every trouble that we've been dealing with. Lord, we lift it to you. And we know that you take it, you receive it, and you pour out your glory, your glory. Your glory. Oh, the glory. <laughs> the glory. <laughs> it's the glory, the glory, the glory, the glory, the glory. Lord, increase your glory, your glory, your glory, your glory, your glory. Lord, pour out your glory. Increase your glory. We're satisfied in your glory. Nothing else compares to you, O oh Lord. You are all that we seek. Jesus, you are everything that we need. And we welcome you, King of glory, to come and do what only you can do. King of glory, come and move in the way that only you can move. King of glory, come and manifest your glory in and through us to bring glory to Jesus. Bring glory to Jesus increase your glory to bring glory to G increase your glory to bring glory to Jesus increase your glory right here in our lives increase your glory to bring glory to Jesus increase your glory right here in our lives Increase your glory to bring glory to Jesus. Increase your glory, your glory in our lives. Increase your glory to bring glory to Jesus. Increase your glory, your glory right now in our lives. 
in our lives, in our lives, in our lives, in our lives. I want you to lift up your voice this morning, even as you lift up your hands. And I want you to say, say, increase your glory to bring glory to Jesus. Increase your glory, your glory in our lives. Increase your glory to bring glory to Jesus. Increase your glory, your glory in our lives. Now just sense that weight of glory just coming upon you. There's a peace that comes in the glory. There's an undescribable wholeness, healing, fullness that comes to you even right now in the glory. He satisfies the places in your life that cannot be satisfied by anything else. Lord, thank you for your glory that settles, settles, settles. Let your glory settle upon us right now in Jesus' mighty name. If you've had pain in your body, it lifts off of you right now. It goes. Every sickness, every dis-ease goes in the ease of the glory. There's an ease that comes upon you right now, bringing the miracle that you need. Lord, I thank you for the supernatural shift that's taking place within physical bodies right now. Lord, I thank you for the supernatural shift that's taking place within relationships, within family situations. Lord, I thank you for the supernatural shift that's taking place even right now within financial circumstance. Lord, I thank you that you're repositioning us by your spirit into your truth. And when we're found in your truth, no lie can stand, no lie can exist, but every enemy assignment is annihilated. The thief is found and suddenly there's supernatural recovery that's discovered. Lord, I thank you that in the glory, even this morning, there's supernatural recovery that comes to your people. Oh, yeah, I feel it right now in this place divine supernatural recovery of things that the enemy has tried to steal the enemy has tried to take and he has to take his dirty hands off of it right now and let go and when the restoration comes to you you don't just get what you lost but it comes back with interest huh the lord says i will restore the days I will restore the weeks. I shall restore the months. And I will restore the year that the enemy has tried to take from you. The thing that the canker worm has tried to destroy. Oh, surely there is a new blessing that's coming upon you. Surely there's a new realm of abundance that's coming upon you. Surely as the open heaven is open over you you shall receive of my graces in this day there's a new grace to walk there's a new grace to live there's a new grace to work and there's a new grace to prosper says the lord oh yes for the ways of the world are not your ways but my higher ways shall become your ways even in the day ahead oh yes and you shall begin to find yourself doing things that you never knew you could do and you shall see yourself in places you didn't even know you could go and the lord says surely you shall see a blessing on your life that you didn't even know you could receive so lift up your hands into the glory and receive it receive it receive it. just take it it's yours just take it take it take it take it take it take it you got to lift your hands up into the realm and just pull it down pull it down pull it down pull it down <laughs> lord we're connecting Lord, we're connecting, 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 connecting to heavenly glory, heavenly glory. And Lord, as we do this, you're changing our story. <laughs> oh, new testimonies being given in the glory. New breakthroughs being given in the glory. New miracles being given in the glory. He's changing your story. He's changing your story. There's new things being given in the glory. There's new insight being given in the glory. There's a new way of living being given in the glory. Because he's changing your story. He's changing 
your story. <laughs> and the accuser shall have no place in you. The accuser has no place in truth. And so the truth of God is beginning to overflow and overtake you even right now. The Bible says it like this. The word of God is forever settled in the heavens. But this morning, we reach into the open heavens, the open window, the open door, the open gateway, the open portal. And we receive what has already been settled in heaven. And we say, Lord, I choose to settle it in my life right now. Right now. Right now. You see, the open heaven requires or demands an open earth. You are the open earth that connects with the open heaven. In this way, God begins to flow and God begins to move and God begins to pour down the heavenly riches from that realm into your realm. Hallelujah. Somebody say, there's a flow that's coming from heaven to earth. There's a flow you got to decree it. you got to declare it. There is a flow that's coming from the divine supernatural into my natural. There's a flow that's coming right now from the heavenly realm into my earthly realm. And I'm about to walk into some heavenly things in the days ahead. The days ahead will not look like the days behind. For there's glory that's on my mind. <laughs> and all I can see is glory. And all I can hear is glory. And all I reverberate is glory. And so I will walk into this glory. Hallelujah. 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 And you know what? When you begin to walk in this glory, you just never know when you're going to walk into another suddenly of God. All throughout the scriptures, we see God showing up suddenly. And in an instant, listen. If the whole world could change. Last March, in four days, your life as you knew it changed. Four days. We're talking about an, in the natural. How much more in the supernatural, the divine supernatural of God. In an instant, can God turn everything around for you? So we say he's turning things around. Okay. He's turning around for, for people who are moving, who choose to move in the truth of God. He's turning things around. I want you to open your Bible with me this morning. The first and the second session are going to be different. I think normally you'd, you know, you would normally do this the same generally when I travel they say preach the same message because the early people want to hear the same thing that the later people want to hear but <laughs> it's, it's difficult for me okay so Genesis 28 let's start here hallelujah <laughs> hallelujah 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 Thank you, Jesus. Let's start down in verse 10. And I'm going to be speaking about, I have a few minutes to speak about power portals this morning. We've been moving in it. I have a brand new book. I should mention this. Power Portals, Awaken Your Connection to the Spirit Realm. It's a brand new book. It's releasing this week. And I'm really, really excited about it. It's not yet technically released, but I have it in my hand. And we got it out on the table for you today. And I would highly encourage you to get a copy of this Power Portals book and you just never know as you're reading you may be sucked up in a supernatural encounter god may catch you up in a vision you might find healing portal opening for you in your body uh, there's no telling what god will do when you focus upon the things of glory but the reason why i really want you to get this book is because there's revelation in here that can shift your life 
completely. This is a scriptural book. It's based on the word of God. And so we dig into the scriptures and I share some of my own personal testimonies and experiences, but then I provide activations also in the book so that you can begin to engage with the revelation and see it open in your life, in your ministries, in your family. So get a copy of Power Portals. It comes out technically on Tuesday, October 6th. And I'm excited about this because on Friday, you know, we just entered into Sakat, uh, the feast of tabernacles this is uh, they call it sometimes the feast of booths or the feast of tents and this whole celebration is all about the glory covering of God it's the time when we remember what God did for the Israelite children as he covered them and led them by a cloud of glory and they were encamped within that cloud realm hallelujah how many know god is looking for people in this day that will live in that cloud realm a people that will live in the cloud covering of his glory amen now in the book i have a whole chapter well i got a chapter i mentioned this morning synchronizing with the spirit i got a chapter about that i've got another chapter in this book that's about the seven dimensions of god's power that are found within the bible there's seven greek words that are talked about and oftentimes are written down in the scriptures as power. And we read it and we just think power, power, power. And power is great and we understand that the power of God is powerful and it's forceful and it's dynamic, but there's more to that. And there's actually levels of God's power that you can experience in your life. And the highest level of God's power is what's called episkiazo, which is the Greek word for, it's the same word that was used of Peter. Remember when he was... What was spoken about Mary, remember when the the angel came to Mary and she was overshadowed by the Holy Spirit? That was the episkiazo of God, okay? It was like the, it would be what we would maybe say the New Testament cloud of glory, the cloud covering of God in that moment where anything can happen. I mean, you can can receive the seed of God in that cloud to, to walk in and birth the dreams of God in your life, amen? And it's the same word that was used for Peter when the Bible says that as he went about his shadow, I think it was in Acts chapter 5, it says that as he went about, or was it 9? Well, it was in one of them. You can find it yourself. But as he went about, the Bible says that his shadow touching the sick would cause healing to come into their life. Now, in our English translations, oftentimes the word shadow is used, and I feel like that's such a limited word because we think of it like the shadow that we see on the wall, you know, the, just a shadow, like a flat shadow. It, that's not what this was at all. This was the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit that was overflowing from Peter's life. Listen, if you have received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and if you've been baptized in the Holy Ghost, then you carry the Spirit of God within you. But God is not satisfied for the Holy Spirit just to remain on the inside of you. He what? listen, they tried to put God in a box in the Old Testament, and you know what happened. He broke out of the box. And in the same way, God wants you to let him out of your life, that rivers of living water would flow from your innermost being and overflow and overshadow every place that you go, that there would literally be a cloud of a piscazzo as you begin to move healing begins to move as you begin to move provision begins to move as you begin to move deliverance begins to move and then in this way when the sick are near you and the sick come to you you don't get sick they get healed we're not afraid of sickness sickness becomes very fearful of us Whatever you fear, you give power to. That's why we must fear the Lord. You understand? It's a different thing. It's a different thing altogether. It's a reverence. It's a holiness. Understanding that He is great. He does miracles. So great. When the poor come near you, you don't get poor. Come on. You get rich. Some say, I'm getting rich. Some say, I'm getting rich. And they're getting rich. And we're all getting rich. Some people have a problem when you use that word rich. And this is church. We shouldn't say the word rich. Filthy, dirty money. Well, that's not the kind of money I have. I don't have filthy, dirty money. There are a lot of people who have filthy, dirty money. My money's anointed. It's holy. 
my money's touched by the glory. <laughs> and that's why my money multiplies. Hallelujah. Because it's miraculous. Hallelujah. And it's used for the purposes of God. I don't love it. I love the Lord. Come on. The love of money is a root of all evil. Let go of the love for finance. Let go of the love for riches. And rest in the promise of divine provision. Now, now you're not connected to a thing. You're connected to Him. And when you're connected to Him, there's unlimited, 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 unlimited. It flows. It flows. It flows. So even prophetically, like naturally, this weekend, we come into the Episciatso, into the Sukkot, into the Feast of Tabernacles, the glory covering of God. And it lasts all the way naturally on the calendar, on the Jewish calendar. It lasts all the way until Friday at sundown, this coming Friday at sundown. But in the spirit, we never have to get out of this realm. In the spirit, this realm belongs to it and you can occupy it. Hallelujah. Okay, so look at this. Genesis 28. Verse 10. Now Jacob went out from Beersheba and went towards Haran. So he came to a certain place and stayed there all night because the sun had set. And he took one of the stones of that place and put it at his head and he lay down in that place to sleep. Then he dreamed and behold, a ladder was set up on the earth and its top reached to heaven. And there the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. Do you see what's happening here? Heaven opens wide and a ladder, a supernatural ladder suddenly appears. A connection. Somebody say it's a connection. It's a connection from heaven to earth. And now Jacob is looking at this scene, this spiritual scene, and he sees the angels going up and he sees the angels coming down. Now, I think it's interesting that the first, he doesn't see the angels coming down from heaven first. The first thing he sees is the angels ascending. They're going up. Now, why are they going up first? Why? Because, listen, oftentimes people think about angels and they think all the angels are in heaven. Now, we know there's a lot of angels in heaven. The Bible says so. But I want to tell you, there's also a lot of angels around you. Whether you see them or not doesn't change the truth that they're there. God has placed his angels around. According to Psalm 91 verse 11, the Bible says that he gives his angels charge over you to keep you, watch over you in all of your ways. Some say, I got angels watching over me. They're working for God to ensure God's purposes come forth in my life. Now we have to agree with the purposes of God in order to see that come to pass. Amen. Now I wrote a book last year and it was released this spring. I had an encounter. God gave me a prophetic word in Jerusalem last year during the Sukkot. And the word was that we were coming into a season in the earth when angelic ministry would be required at a new level. Now, I, I did not see the COVID-19 thing coming. I didn't see, you know, and I'll be the first to admit, I'm not going to tell you, oh, I saw that in the spirit. I, I didn't see it. If I saw it, I'd tell you I did, but I didn't. But what I did see is that we were going to need more angels than ever before. And many of the prophets from the fall of last year all the way up into the new year were prophesying the release of heaven's angel armies an increase of angelic accompaniment, an increase of angels in your life. And it's important to understand what God wants to do in that sphere. Anyway, I mentioned that to mention this, that I have a brand new book. This came out in April. It's called Encountering Your Angels, Biblical Proof That Angels Are Here to Help. Who would like a copy of this? We've got a few out on the table if you'd like to get them. But I'm going to bless you, sister, right there with this. Okay. Am I allowed to pass this? Is that okay? Okay. All these funny rules, right? Okay. God bless you. I was at one place. They said, no, you can't pass it. You have to leave it on the stage. And then they come and they just get it off. Whatever. We'll do whatever. Whatever to get the gospel out. We'll do it. We'll do it. Whatever. Right? Okay. And uh, so Jacob's looking at this, this spiritual scene. He sees angels going up the ladder, coming down the ladder. And then it says, behold, the Lord stood above it. God is above the angels. Jesus is higher than the angels. According to Hebrews chapter one. Okay, he's God. The Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac, the land on which you lie, I will give to you 
and your descendants. Now, God is speaking about inheritance. God is speaking about blessing. I mean, God has given a revelation to Jacob, an awesome heavenly revelations being imparted to his life. He says, also your descendants shall be as the dust of the earth. You shall spread abroad to the west and to the east, to the north and to the south. And in you and in your seed, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Behold, I am with you and will keep you wherever you go and will bring you back to this land for I will not leave you until I have done what I have spoken to you. God is not a man that he should lie. Every promise God has given to you is for you. Every word that he has spoken, I'm telling you, he's watching over his word to perform it in your life. His words will not return to him void, but they are going forth to accomplish that which he purposed for them to do. Do not believe for a second the word of the accuser, but believe the truth of God. Stand in the truth. Stay in the truth. Occupy the truth. Now more than ever before. Hallelujah. For surely God will do it. Then Jacob awoke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place. And I did not know it. And he was afraid and said, How awesome is this place. This is none other than the house of God. This is the gate of heaven. There it is, a gate. It's an entry point, an entrance, a doorway, a portal from heaven to earth. This is a power portal being opened for Jacob. What happened in this power portal? Well, there was divine alignment that took place. God began to speak and Jacob heard God's word in the power portal. There was impartation that was taking place, inheritance kind of impartation. There was angelic activity that was taking place. And how many would like to have an open portal, a power portal in your home? How many would like to have a, a power portal in your car when you're driving down the road. I mean, come on. You can be in the glory and still be useful. You can. You should be. Actually, I think the most useful people on earth should be those that are filled with glory. Some people say, well, my head's too high in the clouds to do any earthly good. No, that's, that's the devil telling you that because if you get your head high enough in the clouds, you'll be better on the earth than anybody else. I mean, you will... You will walk exactly where God shows you to walk. You will do exactly what he tells you to do. Now, yes, there's times when you're soaking and surrender to the spirit and you might be flat on your back on the floor, caught up in a portal. But I'm telling you, when you have these power portal encounters, there's a life shift that takes place. You'll never be the same ever again. There's times when we'll be in meetings and people just start going zoop, 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 zoop. I mean, they just get caught up. Really? Really? There's times we'll be in large meetings and the whole church will just go up into the heavenly realm. I had a recording I did years ago called Heavenly Things Throne Room Encounters. I wasn't planning to do a recording. I was in Phoenix, Arizona ministering and I started sharing scriptures from Ezekiel. And as I was reading, you know, in Ezekiel experience, power portal, you talk about power portals. He saw a windstorm coming out of the north, just like a tornado. The way I think about power portals is this. Listen, a tornado in the natural occurs when hot and cold air currents meet, right? The intersection creates that swirling. A power portal comes at the place where heaven and earth begins to meet. And then there's a swirling. And you get caught up. You get caught up. You get caught up. Caught up. I was doing a meeting in Pensacola, Florida, about 15 years ago, maybe longer. Assemblies of God Church. And it was the end of the meeting. I'd preach a nice sermon, if I do say so myself. And uh, we had a nice little meeting. And I walked down the, the center aisle and I was, had my hands lifted. And I was declaring some words of knowledge. And then the Lord put it in my mouth to declare. Translation and transportation to the third heavens and to the nations. Now, I never decreed something like that ever before. That was a spirit of God. Listen, to say something like that, you need the spirit of God to say that through you. But no quicker had I said that, and suddenly 
It was like the whole church went up. The leader of that meeting, she saw in a vision, all of a sudden it was like a, like a sardine can. The roof of the church just rolled back and people started going up. There was people, they got cut up to Switzerland. There was a person that went over to Africa. They, were, they got caught up on a canoe with a, a, a couple on, on, on the river in Africa. There was another couple went to India. I went over to Asia. I mean, we had all these encounters in the spirit. I'm not talking about making natural trips. I'm talking about making spiritual trips. And God did what he wanted to do through us. Now, you might be looking at me and say, that sounds weird. Well, it certainly is unusual, but it's not really weird. It's biblical. And if you want to know where, then get the book Power Portals and you can, you know, you get all the scriptures for it and everything like that. Uh, but God is looking for a people that are surrendered to him. People that are surrendered. A people that will allow heaven to touch down and make its home here in the earth. That's the fulfillment of the prayer of Jesus. Father, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Somebody say, on earth as it is in heaven. What's it like in heaven? What's it like in heaven? Because God wants it to be on earth in the same way that it is in heaven. What would it look like when you establish a power portal in your home and your home becomes on earth like it is in heaven? Ha. Huh. <laughs> Listen, you'd have people lined up out your front door waiting to get in, waiting to get in. I remember many years ago ministering up in the Canadian Arctic and we would go from town to town to town. And at that time, I only had one book that I had written. It was my very first book. It was called Waves of Glory and it's long out of print. And I've written many, many books since then. But this book, Waves of Glory, recounted testimonies of things that happened for us while we were here in San Diego, the early days of our ministry, the revival that was breaking out. And I just sat down, I just recorded these testimonies and God did some miraculous things around even the writing of the book. But I took it up to the Arctic and I gave it to a lady named Pastor Annie. Pastor Annie and Mark, wonderful people. They pastor in a place called Wakeham Bay. I guess that's a better name to call it than Kangik Sujuak. Anyway, because uh, you never remember that one. But uh, Wakeham Bay is the English name for their little town up in the Arctic. And they're, they're Eskimo people, Inuits. And uh, I gave Pastor Annie my book. Well, she gave this book to her daughter. She was so concerned about her daughter Annie and her husband George because George was the drug lord in the Arctic. And Annie was so far from the Lord, she was backslidden. And she had just gotten into all kinds of craziness and crazy stuff and uh, Pastor Annie was concerned for her daughter. Sorry, Pastor Annie was concerned for her daughter, Alice. Alice was the name of the daughter. That's okay. Annie was not the backslidden one. I think I just messed this up. Annie's a pastor. Alice's a backslidden one. Okay. So she gives Alice the book. Alice doesn't want to read it. She's not interested in the Lord, but then she gets sick and she ends up on the couch and she's laying there on the couch. And what's next to her on, on the table beside the couch? My book. So she picks it up and just figures she'll just read because she's not feeling very well. So she's laying there on the couch and she starts reading about some of the things that God has done. And she begins reading. I don't remember the order it all happened, but she began reading about the heavenly fragrance. And suddenly the fragrance of heaven began to invade her living room. And she thought, this is weird. Then she begins to read about the supernatural, you know, the golden glory, the golden sparkles that come in the glory. And she said when she looked up, it looked like fireworks coming out of her wall, all this golden glory sprinkling out of her wall. She was amazed. She kept on reading. She began to read about different encounters that God was given about supernatural oil flowing. All of a sudden, the oil began to flow out of her hands. The oil began to drip down off of the uh, off of the ceiling of her apartment. At this point, she ended up down on her knees beside the couch and she asked Jesus to come into her life to be her personal Lord and Savior. She repented of her sin. She called her mother on the phone and she was crying. She said, Mom, I have just given my heart to Jesus. And he said, what happened? She said, I'm coming over to see you. So she came over to the the place and Alice he said mom these signs and wonders were happening I know that God is real he's touched me here I was feeling not well now I'm feeling okay and I give my heart to Jesus anyway it was miraculous 
And so Annie being so excited, she said, we got to go tell the, the uh, radio station about this. Well, the radio in the Arctic's a little bit, a lot different than the radio down here. In the Arctic, they use it like a paging system. Anybody can just go on the, you know, they play country western music all the time. Johnny, your dog is over in my yard. Come get your dog. And Alice gets on and she starts telling people, she says, God has showed up in my home. Miracles are happening in my home. I felt the presence of God. I have given my heart to Jesus as my Lord and Savior. If you want to see what God is doing, come over to my home right now. Well, this is wonderful, isn't it? It's glorious, except for it's not so good for drug business. And uh, George is dealing drugs and he's listening to the radio and all of a sudden he hears his wife on the radio announcing that their home is now a place where God is pouring out his miracles. Wonderful things are happening. She invited everyone to come over to their home. So people, the community begins to come over to Alice. I'm telling you, this is a true story. I know it sounds crazy. It's a true story. The community begins to come over to Alice's home. They get in a lineup. As they're entering into the home, they feel the cloud of glory. Many people are passing out in the entryway. They're passing out in the home. Wherever they are, the, the glory of God is touching them. George decides he's going to go over to his home and pick a fight with anybody that tries to come in. He's going to beat them up. George comes over to the home. And he's ready to have a fight. He walks through the front door, gets hit by a cloud of glory, starts crying like a baby, repents of his sin. He gets totally delivered of his drug and alcohol addiction in a moment and starts serving the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, God turned that community, wake and bake, Kangik Sujuak. He turned that community upside down. The following summer, Janet and I went to that community. And when we were there, they told us, they said, there's only three people that are not saved in this whole community. I mean, they were having full-blown revival. And the first night I was ministering, just like I am this morning. And in the back came one of the police officers. And they said, that's one that's not saved. I said, well, they're about to be. By the end of the meeting, that police officer was up at the altar, weeping like a baby, giving their heart to Jesus Christ. After the meeting, Janet and I went back to be with Pastor Mark and Annie at their home. We were having a time of fellowship when suddenly the phone rang and it was the police officer that had just given their heart to Jesus calling from the police department. Now, this is, you know, up in the Arctic, this is like a tiny little trailer. You know, it's the police department and it's two jail, jail cells. And those are the other two people that haven't yet received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, one in each cell. And it's just like the cartoon jail cells that you see. I mean, the old fashioned ones. We were down at Seaport Village the other day and we saw that old fashioned San Diego jail. It's just like that, you know, very basic, very simple bars on the doors. The police officer calls and says, can you come up to the jail and tell these prisoners the same thing that you told me tonight at the church service? So Pastor Mark and Annie took us up to the jail. Janet and I, we went and we uh, asked the prisoners if it would be okay if we held their hands as we talked to them and through the jail cell I hold one Janet held the other and we told them about Jesus and they were crying like little babies I'm telling you these hard prisoners were touched by the glory of God and in the jail that night they gave their heart to Jesus Christ and Lord and Savior we saw the entire community I'm talking about 100% salvations in that community a power portal opened in that place to transform an entire community. We went back to, after ministry, we went back to the pastor's house. We got another phone call. The police officer saying that after we left the home, uh, after we left the jail cell, that the jail cell literally began to reverberate. It began to shake. And they all, all three of them fell on the floor. There was deliverance that took place for the prisoners and all three of them got baptized in the Holy Ghost, not even knowing what was happening. They started speaking in languages that they didn't understand. Hallelujah. When a power portal opens, anything is possible. Nothing is too difficult for our God. Amen. I want to give a few away uh, a few more. But this morning when I shared, I was reading out of Genesis 28 about Jacob 
going on a journey. He was on that faith journey. He was setting out to do something he hadn't done before. And in the journey, God met him in that faith walk. And I want to tell you that God will meet you in your faith walk. And the place that God met Jacob was in a place called, that ended up being called Bethel. And in that place was where Jacob had laid down, set his head on a stone, and all of a sudden, this spiritual vision came to him where he saw heaven opening up and he saw a ladder descending out of heaven and he saw the angels going up the ladder and he saw the angels coming down the ladder and he saw the Lord standing above the ladder and he heard God's voice and God was speaking to him about blessing and about inheritance and about his future and God was giving him promises. It was the most amazing, remarkable encounter. And when he woke up from his sleep, he said, how awesome is this place. And I was not even aware of it. I thought it was just a dream, but this is the house of God. This is the gate of heaven. Now that word gate, the word window, the word door, the word entrance, those are all words that can be used to describe what we would call a portal. Somebody say portal. A portal is a gate. It's a doorway. It's a window. It's an entrance. And if you read uh, the definition in the dictionary, it actually says a large and imposing one. Now, I want to tell you, when we're talking about power portals, we're talking about doorways where God is able to access our life and cause heaven to flow into the earth. But what I need to clarify in this service is that the doorway isn't just some abstract thing that happens. The door is a person. Jesus declares himself in John chapter 10. He says, I am the door. I am the door, he says. He says, I am the portal. Whoa. He's giving us a revelation that he is our portal into heavenly glory. Listen, there's no other way that you can access heaven except through the doorway of Jesus Christ. There is no other way to the Father, only through Jesus can we be saved? Jesus is truth. Somebody say, he is the truth. He is the truth, the ultimate truth. Listen, there's a lot of facts that are competing for your attention, but at, at the end of the day, facts will always change. Facts are fleeting. Facts transition, but truth remains the same. The same. Something that bothers me is when I listen to people nowadays talk, a lot of times they say, well, this is my truth. And they're not really talking about truth. They're just talking about their experience or they're talking about a conflict that they've recently had or something bad that's happened to them. But it's not really true. It's a lot of facts. And if you live in the realm of facts, you can easily become discouraged, disheartened. You can become depressed and you can become diseased. But God is not wanting us to live in the realm of fact. He's wanting us to live in the realm of truth. There's some people have told me, they said, Brother Joshua, you know, it's nice that you uh, serve the Lord and, you know, you're, you're uh, full, uh, fully sold out to Jesus. But, you know, Jesus isn't the only God. I had someone tell me recently, Jesus isn't the only God. He's one of them. And I love Jesus, but there's a lot of other gods, they say. No, there, there's only one. There's only one. There's only one. Um, I wrote about it in this book, Power Portals, and I want to read you this little story. It's called The Elephant. Have you ever heard The Elephant and the Six Men? Have you ever heard this story? People have told me this story, especially when I go overseas, that they're trying to enlighten me to the reality of other uh, divine entities. Now, let me tell you this. Jesus is the only way, the only way, the only way. The idea that truth is relative has become widespread in our society. There's an ancient story that's believed to have originated in India about six blind men and an elephant. I'm going to read it to you here. This story has been told many times in numerous versions, including a famous 19th century poem by John Godfrey Sachs. In Sachs's narrative, six blind men go to examine an elephant in order to understand what it is like. The first man encounters the broad, sturdy side of the animal and concludes that it's like a wall. The second man feels the tusk and determines that it's like a spear. The third catches hold of the trunk and decides that it is like a snake. The fourth touches the animal's wide knees and claims that it's like a tree trunk. 
The fifth feels one of the large ears and says that it is like a fan. And the sixth man grasps the tail and proclaims that the elephant is like a rope. Remember, they're blind. They've never seen an elephant before, so they're all coming to their own conclusions. In one of his closing stands, a sax writes, and so these men of Indostan disputed loud and long, each in his own opinion, exceeding stiff and strong. Though each was partly in the right, and all were in the wrong. In some versions of this story, the blind men come to an agreement that they are all correct, each man having his own truth. This illustration has sometimes been used to promote the idea that it's valid for people to adhere to different truths and that all religions are essentially the same and ultimately speak about the same God. The problem is, that's not the truth at all. There are not many ways to God. In the story, each man failed to give a proper description of the elephant because he was deceived by the limitations and imaginations of his own mind. Because the men were blind, they were unable to ascertain the whole picture. I would like to create my own ending to the story. A mysterious seventh man arrives on the scene. Not only can he see perfectly, but he is also wise. He tells the other men, what you are fascinated with is not like a wall, spear, a snake, tree trunk, fan, or rope. Let me begin to describe the elephant for you. It is strong and mighty, 21 feet long and 10 feet tall, weighing in at five tons. Fascinated by this description, the six men cry out, we want to see the truth like you see it. Acknowledging their pleas, the seventh man stretches out his hand toward their eyes and says, because you have believed my words, you will see. Immediately, each of the men miraculously begins to see for the very first time, astonished and amazed by the miracle that has just been performed. All six men fall down at the feet of the seventh man and say, let us follow you, for you have rescued us from our blindness and you tell us the truth. Who are you? And the man replies, I am Jesus, the one and only Savior of all mankind. Worship God. Hallelujah. 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 We must worship God knowing that He is our portal into heavenly glory. Jesus is our access to the Father. He's our point of access to heavenly glory. Now, I want to speak about power portals this morning, and I want you to turn in your Bible with me. Let's go to Acts chapter, let's go to Acts chapter 9, and we're going to start in verse 3. Actually, once you start looking for power portals in the Bible, you will see them all over the place. It's amazing, and if you can see it in the Word, then you can know that God for sure wants to do it in your life. Amen? God wants to give you power portal encounters, where the divine presence of God just opens up in such a powerful way. The suddenlies of God I mentioned this morning. Look at this. Acts chapter 9 verse 3 says, Suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven. Now we're speaking about Saul. The man who was the persecutor of all persecutors. Actually, if we back up, let's look at here. I'm going to open up my, I was going to read out of the book. But let me go right here in the word. Let's start in verse 1, I think, is where I want to start. Look at this. Oh, it's so good. So God. Huh. Acts chapter 9. Look at this. Then Saul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord. I mean, he was a mean dude. Went to the high priest. And this is what he He asked letters from him to the synagogues of Damascus so that if he found anyone who were of the way. Now, it's interesting. It says anyone who is of the way. This is another way to say anyone who was a Christ follower. Why was it called the way? Because Jesus is the way. He's a portal. You understand that? And actually, the Bible speaks about him being a sevenfold way. I like to say it, he's a sevenfold portal. And there's seven different uh, things very specifically that he gives us access to in the spiritual realm that every Christian needs to walk in, understand, and obtain. Amen? And uh, I write about it in the book, The Sevenfold Portal of Jesus. And, and it's wonderful. But here, Paul, I mean, he was Saul at the time, and he's such a brutal dude. It wasn't like he just stumbled upon a Christian and persecuted them. He was actively looking for people who were of the way, people who were Christians, those who were, uh, those who had 
the divine portal open to them. You understand? Okay, so here he is looking for those who are of the way, whether men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. As he journeyed, he came near Damascus and suddenly a light shone around him from heaven. This light came from heaven to earth and it was shining all around him. Now that's a huge portal right there. That's a huge, oftentimes when I see portals in the spirit, if I have an open eye vision, oftentimes I see them like shafts of light coming from heaven to earth, coming into an atmosphere. There's times I've seen the light come down upon a person. I've seen that portal just touch. Actually, we were over in, this was awesome. We were over in Ireland, Belfast, ministering. And I was preaching up here, probably it was about the height of the stage. And the woman was over here where the Griffos are sitting. And uh, I saw a light come down and shine on her. And it went all the way down her back, down her spine. And I told her what I saw happening. Well, she got so excited because she had been in a car accident years prior. And her whole back was messed up and it had never been the same. She'd been in pain every single day. And when I declared that that portal was open, that the light was shining upon her, instantaneously she received a supernatural miracle from God. Now that's awesome, right? It's awesome. And if any of you need a back healing, take it because Brother Mark already called it out today and it's available for you. That portal is open for you to receive divine healing. Jesus is the portal. Amen. Okay, so we go on to Iceland. We're in Reykjavik, Iceland a few days later and we're ministering. And I feel like I'm supposed to share this testimony about what happened to the sister in Belfast, Ireland. So I start talking about it. And when I explain that she was sitting over here in this section, as soon as I go like this with my hand, the woman that was standing over there in Reykjavik, Iceland, immediately hits the floor. Now, the floor is concrete. They didn't have nice carpet like Ireland. This was concrete floor. And when she went down, it sounded like we could hear her head crack on the concrete. This is not, a, this is not the sound a preacher wants to hear, you know, in, in the meetings. We want everyone to go down nicely and peacefully and glory realm, you know, all this kind of stuff. Okay, so we hear her head crack. And I said to Jan, I said, you need to go over there. And as I'm continuing to miss her, you need to go over there and just make sure she's okay. So Janet goes over there. When she gets over there, she hears the woman tell her that she had been in a car accident so many years prior, that she needed a miracle in her back and her disc, and that when she went down, that wasn't her head, that was her back snapping. And that her back supernaturally snapped back into place. Anyway, later on we find out she got a total, radical, creative miracle. One testimony opened up a portal for another testimony to come forward. Is that amazing or what? It's amazing. So oftentimes I see them like light begin to shine. And maybe you've seen this before and didn't know exactly what it was or didn't have vocabulary for it. That's why it'd be so helpful for you to get the book Power Portals. And we got a whole bunch out there for you. And don't just get one for you. Listen, tis the season. Christmas is coming soon. You need to get one for your child, for your mother, for your father, for your, your babysitter, for... Maybe even one for your dog. Our dog loves the glory. We have a little dog named Buttercup, and she is so sweet. She, she can sense angels when they're in the room. She sits at my feet when I write at my desk. Dogs are wonderful, and they, they like listening to glory stories too. Okay, anyway. Uh, so here this light opens from heaven. It shines on Saul. In verse 4 of Acts chapter 9, then he fell to the ground. Look at that. Just like the woman in... Uh, Ireland and just like the woman in Iceland and people ask me all the time well why why do people fall down when the spirit comes and the theological answer is they fall down because they can't stand up that's the reason why they fall and uh, so Paul fell to the ground and he heard a voice saying to him Saul Saul why are you persecuting me and I want to say this that when a power portal manifests even naturally in our sphere we will hear the voice of God speaking to us clearly. Now, sometimes you may hear it audibly. I've very seldom heard the audible voice of God. Most times when a portal opens and God begins to speak, it's that inward witness of the Holy Spirit inside of me. It's like an impression. I feel it. I know it. I can sense what God is saying. Although I have not heard it audibly, I've heard it clearly with my spirit. When portals open, you hear the voice of God speaking. So God asked Saul, 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 why are you persecuting me? And he said, who are you, Lord? Now, isn't that interesting? He said, who are you? 
But then he finishes it with, Lord. (laughs) He knows this is God getting his attention, right? Then the Lord said, I am Jesus. Who? there's a clarity right there. I am, I'm not just any kind of God. I am Jesus whom you are persecuting. It is hard for you to kick against the goad. So he trembling and astonished said, Lord, what do you want me to do? Then the Lord said to him, arise and go into the city and you will be told what you must do. And the, the story goes on. I mean, it's awesome. The men who journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no one. Then Saul arose from the ground and when his eyes were open, he saw no one, but they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. And he was three days without sight and neither ate nor drank. Now, some people might look at this and see, say, well, oh, look at God causes blindness. This is not a physical permanent blindness. You understand? What it's telling us is this. When the power portal opens, expect for your natural senses to be dulled as your spiritual senses are heightened. Expect to go into a season of being taught by the Spirit how to see beyond what your eyes can see, to hear beyond what your ears can hear, to know beyond what you can naturally know. Come on. I'm telling you, there's times when I a portal has opened in my life and I have just, I mean, literally shook, vibrated under the power of the presence of God. And in that moment, I had no desire to eat. I had no desire to go to the restroom. I didn't have to do those things. Why? Because I was being caught up with God. It was beyond the natural. It was something divinely supernatural. God wants to give you these kinds of encounters. God wants to give you these kinds of encounters to bring you into divine alignment with what God's doing. How many know that God brought Saul into divine alignment? Such divine alignment, he got his whole name changed. He got a whole personality shift. Come on, his whole life was changed in an instant. Why? Because the power of God opened up over him. Now, I mentioned this morning that in the book, Power Portals, I mentioned that seven different dimensions, levels of the power of God that as believers, we can begin to walk in, operate in, and go higher and higher and higher in the things of the Spirit. And I encourage you all to get a copy of the book because I can only give you so much today, okay? But listen, Jesus is our portal into heavenly glory. But then David, there's this very interesting psalm, and I want you to turn there. This is Psalm 24, and I'd encourage you to read the rest of Paul's testimony. It's remarkable. He ends up being the one that gets caught up into the third heaven. <laughs> In this body or out of the body. I don't know. I just, I just went there. I don't know how it all happened. I don't know all the details of it. I don't understand the technical aspects, but I was there. He, he saw things. In the third heaven, he saw things in the spirit that others had never seen. And even some things that he wasn't allowed to come back and even talk about. Why? It was a personal impartation for him for the call. What he was called to do. Listen, when you get caught up in these realms with God, there's impartations that are getting, there's giftings, there's anointings, there's favor that's deposited in your life. The enablement, what you need to fulfill the call of God upon your life. Somebody say, I'm called. Okay, I'm called. Uh, What are you called to do? Anybody? Well, Jesus said it like this. He said, go into all the world and preach the good news of the gospel. Hmm. We're all called, all of us. We're all called to go and carry what God has given to us not just hide it away, put it away and, you know, I'm going to hide in my basement for the rest of my life. No, you got to go. You got to be where the people are. You know, the enemy assignment right now is separation. It's isolation. It's depression. It's madness. Come on. Do you know, if you're away from people, you start to go crazy. And that's because you know you're crazy. Okay, so... No, not really. You're not. And I take back those words. God bless you. But it is healthy. It is healthy. It's God's idea for us to connect with each other. The only way we can do that is if we're willing to get out 
of our comfort zone and go. Come on. Reach out. Make the connection. And as we do that, God's able to bless it. God's able to bless it. Now, David, in Psalm 24, this is way before Jesus comes and manifests on the earth, although he is the lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world. And David saw in the spirit some of the the revelation of Christ. But look at this. In Psalm 24, he says, The earth is the Lord's and all its fullness, the world and those who dwell therein. Now, there's a little... Uh, prophecy that's given in scripture that says the earth shall be filled with the knowledge the revelation of the glory of the Lord to the same degree that the waters cover the earth right we've heard this prophecy and we know that even the days we're living in this is beginning to trickle in more and more it's beginning to happen more and more we're seeing biblical prophecy happen before our eyes somebody asked me the other day they said do you think we're living in the days of revelation i said i think we're galloping through the book of revelation that's what's happening right now we're, we're moving very very quickly and uh <laughs> we are seeing the knowledge of the glory of the lord being released onto the earth so that people begin to know not just about God, but they're beginning to experience the reality of God, the fullness of his glory. Amen. Now, when I read that prophetic word, I like to make it personal. I want you to make it personal this morning with me. I want you to take your own hand. It's safe and clean. And I want you to put it on the top of your head. (laughs) Listen, I was in a truck stop about a week ago in Blythe, California. Is that Blythe? Is it in California, I think? It said CDC approved safe and clean. That's what it said. That place was filthier. (laughs) It was so disgusting, but it was CDC approved safe and clean. So everybody felt great about going into that truck stop. Anyway, take take your clean hand your clean hand who may ascend the hill of the lord he who has clean hands oh thank you jesus and a pure heart okay put your clean hand on the top of your head right there and i want you to confess this with me make a decree say i am the earth i am of the earth yeah genesis says it god made mankind from the dust of the earth i am the earth And I am being filled. Okay, let that infilling come right now. That glory. I am being filled. Yeah, declare it. I am. Not I'm going to be. It's I am being filled right now. With the knowledge of the revelation of the glory of the Lord. To the same degree that the waters cover the sea I am being filled now just put your hands out in front of you just like you're about to receive a gift because there's more there's more there's more the infilling's begun but there's more there's a whole lot more yeah right there okay so put your hands out like you're ready to receive a gift because the Bible says that the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord to the same degree that the waters cover the sea You cannot know the sea without the water. Without the water, the sea is just a very deep gravel pit. Very muddy and dirty gravel pit. But because of the waters, it becomes a sea. And in the same way, God is filling you and me with the knowledge of his glory. So that we cannot be known apart from him. That we cannot be known apart. Whoa! from his glory right now the glory comes and fills you from the top of your head to the soles of your feet you're being completely filled with the glory of the lord who when jacob looked into that power portal that was open he saw angelic activity angels going up and angels coming down when Jesus was being baptized, <laughs> he became the ladder from earth to heaven. And it was said that upon the Son of Man, there were angels ascending and descending, going up and going down. And Jesus Christ lives inside of you. 
Oh. The latter lives inside of you. Actually, there are seven personal portals. I speak about it in the book, but I'm going to give them to you this morning. We're going to briefly talk about this for a moment. There are seven personal portals that God wants to open within you. David said, the earth is the Lord's, all of its fullness, the world and those who dwell with therein. For he has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the waters. Who may ascend into the hill of the Lord or who may stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul to an idol nor sworn deceitfully, he shall receive blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is Jacob, the generation of those who seek him, who seek your, are you part of that generation? The seeking generation, the one that's not satisfied with the status quo. I'm not satisfied by my parents' religion, their understanding of God. I've got to know God for myself. I've got to pursue him for myself. I've got to run after him with everything that I am. I've got to go after him because I know that there's so much more. Then Jacob turns and he says this to those that are the seekers, those that are the pursuers, those that are the ones that run after God with everything that you are. He says, lift up your heads, O you gates. <laughs> Jesus is our portal into heavenly glory. But we become with an open heart pursuing the things of God. Saying, Jesus, I need you to be my personal Lord and Savior. I give my life to you. We become a portal for heavenly glory to come and flow into the earth. I go in through him and he comes out through me. <laughs> I go in through him and he comes out through me. Do you see how the portals work? We go in through him. He is our portal into heavenly glory. But then we become so consumed by him. We are in him. He's in us. And now it's time. Open up, you ancient gates. Open up, you everlasting doors. Why? So that the king of glory may find entrance. So the king of glory can come into your home, come into your finances, come into your family, come into your business. So that the king of glory has entrance, access to every area of your life. You see, the very first door, the very first portal that God needs access from you is the portal of your heart right here. The portal of your heart. Your heart is the seat of your spirit. The Bible tells us in the book of Revelation, Jesus stands at the door of your heart and he knocks. He says, will you let me in? Will you really let me be Lord of your life? Will you let me save you from your sin? Will you let me redeem you from the pit of destruction where you've been heading? Will you let me give you a brand new life? Will you let me take your sin, the weight of your shame, your pain, your guilt? Will you give it to me? He says, my burden, it is easy. My yoke, it's easy. My burden, it's light. It's light. It's light. There's an ease. Oh. Some of you, you're, you may be here this morning and you've been struggling over the last little while. Maybe you've never made Jesus Christ your personal Lord and Savior. I want to give you an opportunity to know him this morning. Not just know him for this meeting. But I want to give you an opportunity to welcome him into your life. That he would live inside of you. Oh, It's time to open up the door of your heart and give him access. You may be in here this morning and you say, Brother Joshua, I, I've given my life to Jesus. I love the Lord. But there's things that have gotten in the way. There's distractions that have come. And I don't feel the fire that I used to feel. 
I don't have the passion I once had. But this morning, I want to make it right with God. I want to get right with God. This morning, if you're in this place, you say, I want to open up the portal of my heart all the way. And I want to make Jesus number one. I want you to just lift up your hands to heaven. And we're all going to pray this together. Say, Father, God, I give you access to my life. Jesus, I invite you to come into my heart. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. My Redeemer. My healer. I believe that you died, rose again on the third day, and that you hold the keys to death, hell, and the grave. Because of your work in my life, I can be saved. I choose right now to let go of all sin every distraction that hinders me from living for you. Jesus, be my Lord. I love you. There's a cleansing that's coming right now. There's a cleansing. It's a cleansing. A pure flow from heaven. Just a cleansing in the spiritual realm right now. It happens through the door, the portal of your heart actually God loves you so much he doesn't just want you to open up the door and give him access but he wants to come all the way in and he wants to begin working in your heart actually heart healing is one of the things that he does best where others can't do it he can do it the Bible says he binds up the brokenhearted (laughs) if you've had a broken heart he's working on that healing even right now just Give him your heart. Open up the door. Say, come in, come in, come in. Do your healing, God. Do your healing. Do your work on the inside of me. Deal with those heart issues that I've struggled with. Lord, help me. Help me. Help me be the person that you want me to be. Thank you, Jesus. Then the Bible tells us, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth begins to speak. Do you know that your mouth is a second portal that God wants to open up? God wants this portal. This is actually the portal of life. The portal for life. The portal of your mouth. David spoke about it like this. In the Psalms, he said, God, Lord, keep watch over the door of my lips. He was calling his lips a portal. He said, this is a portal right here. A big, Actually, a big gate. Some people have bigger gates here than others. But it's a, it's a big gate. And uh, we've got to be careful both what goes in and what comes out of this gate right here. Now, we know that the Proverbs tell us the power of life and death is in the tongue. And so we used to sing this little song when we were in Sunday school. At least I did when I was a child. Be careful, little mouth, what you say. Oh, be careful, little mouth, what you say. For the Father up above is looking down in love. So be careful, little mouth, what you say. Because the power of life and death is in the tongue. Now, do you think God wants you to go all over the place just speaking curses everywhere you go? That's death, right? God didn't want you to do that. God wants you to open up and speak life, speak life, speak life. We have a precedent, an example through Jesus Christ, our Savior. The Bible says that his words that he spoke were spirit and they were life. So God gives us the opportunity to speak life everywhere we go. And listen, we can trust that he will teach us. Even that the Holy Spirit inside of us will begin to teach us, instruct us, guide us. It's not about following a set of rules or about regulations or working or striving or struggling to be who God wants us to be. It's about entering into the ease of the glory and allowing the ease of the glory to enter into us. Remember, many years ago, we would talk about miracles and we would say that was so incredible. Now, it was harmless what we were saying, because from our heart, we were saying it's just the most wonderful thing ever. Right. But God began to deal with us about that word incredible, because incredible actually means that it's not credible at all. And so although it was innocent, 
what our mouth was saying is the things that God does are not credible. Now, that's not what we meant. Our heart meant they're wonderful. Well, then why don't you say so? Let's just say they're wonderful. That miracle was so wonderful. There's so many Bible words that can describe the miraculous. Amazing, awesome, wonderful. I was full of awe. I mean, there's so many different words, Bible words that you can use to speak about the things of God. And they breathe life into the atmosphere. When we speak words of life, it releases life. And then the Lord began to deal with me. And he said, Josh, Joshua, your, your mouth is a portal for life. And so whatever you put into it should bring life. And it was like, oh, but I like cupcakes, you know. A donut here and there, you know, every once in a while. And I had my long list of all the things I've been eating. And the Lord began to deal with me on a personal level. I'm not putting this on you. You know, if the Lord lets you eat cupcakes, eat cupcakes. Let them eat cake. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You know. Uh, but I'm talking about in that relationship with the Lord. Listening to his voice. He'll begin to correct some areas of our life that have been a little off. And then he'll give us that refocus that we need to keep on going strong and healthy in the call that he's called us. So the Lord began to deal with me with these little areas. And I said, God, but this and this and this. And I like that and that and that. And then he gave me this little thing. This little phrase, this decree to speak. I honor God's temple because I honor God. And when I really got it in my spirit, it became an easy thing. I honor God's temple. I am the temple of the whole. You are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And you will honor the temple because you honor God. Because of my love for God. I cannot bring garbage to the temple. I'm not going to just throw everything all kind of careless stuff all over. The I'd never do that in here. I'd never do it in a physical church setting. I'd never do it in a corporate setting where we're gathered. So why would I do it to myself? Come on. When we begin to open these portals, the Holy Spirit begins to speak to us about each one. It begins to show us how we can steward what we're called to do. Anyway. I have just been, I've had a big portal this morning. I've just been talking and talking and talking. I notice, okay, five minutes. Okay, let's do them. Are you ready? We got five more to do in five minutes. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Okay, so from the portal of your heart opens the portal of your mouth. And then the next portal is the portal of your eyes and the portals of your ears. These portals are connected together. What you see, what you hear. It's often together in scripture. Remember, he was ears to hear, he was eyes to see, let him see, let him hear what the Spirit is speaking, what the Spirit is saying, what the Spirit is showing. Okay, so these portals are connected together. If your eyes are filled with light, your whole body will be consumed by light. So they're doorways for the glory of God to come in. What have you been paying attention to? What have you been focusing on? Come on. And your ears are portals of faith. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by what? The word of God. So the question is, what have you been listening to? Because if we're listening to the wrong things, we're going to get the wrong results. It doesn't matter that you, it doesn't mean that you can't turn on the news and find out what's happening. What it means is that you must make sure that there's more of a balance of hearing God's word than hearing the word of the enemy. Come on. You don't want it to be out of balance because you will believe whatever comes in. That's the way that God created these portals. What you're listening to, you will begin to eventually believe. That's why it's so important not to listen to everything that's being said right now. Come on. The assignment of the enemy is to shut you down, to pull you apart, to isolate you. Come on. But God wants to grow you up in the spirit. Okay. So then from these portals, our mind begins to think and our mind is a very powerful portal. The Bible says, let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. God wants to give you a miracle mindset, a miracle portal right here in your mind. And then from your mind, what you think, what you're pondering upon. Think on these things, heavenly things, the Bible says. 
when you're thinking about the heavens, what begins to happen? It begins to activate the portal of your innermost being, which the Bible tells us this is the seat of the soul. This is the place where the Holy Spirit begins to flow. From your innermost being shall flow rivers of living water. How does that happen? When you've been focusing on the heavens, looking to the heavens, listening to the heavens, suddenly there's an activation. Suddenly you can't stay quiet any longer. It begins to roar from within you. Whoa! The power begins to flow from within you. And the power, you can't block it and you can't say, God, God, I'm not going to release it. Listen, he's made point of contact for that release. The portal of your innermost being opens wide and suddenly you can begin to feel it flooding your whole body. It flows right down your arms and it comes out through the portals of your hands. Your hands are the portals for God's power, provision, prosperity and miracles to flow you will lay hands on the sick and what happens who these portals open wide and heaven comes straight out my palm hallelujah i mean really these are my jumper cables if someone needs a little energization you just take your jumper cables put them on and they get zapped in the holy ghost the bible says god will bless the works of your you got to put your hands to work as you put your hands to work, God begins, His power begins to flow from your hands. Okay, get the book. Get the book. You need the book. Power portals awaken your connection to the spirit realm. There's activations. It's wonderful. A whole bunch of glory goodness in here. The last portal, your feet. Your feet are portals. What kind of portals? Portals for possession. Joshua 1, 3. I will give you every place that your feet ha. Huh? <laughs> Now you're walking around your community a little different. Now you start walking around your apartment building a little bit different. When you understand that God has given you portals for possession, you begin claiming territory for the Lord. You begin occupying the atmospheres where God sends you to. Oh, I wish I could give you more, but you know what? There's a lot in this book that you need to get. Who would like a copy of this book? Power Portals, Awaken Your Connection to the Spirit Realm. Okay, it's out there, right outside the exit door, on a table. You can get it. And we also have another, I released this last spring, Encountering Your Angels, Biblical Proof, that angels are here to help. And finally, these Power Portal 10-card sets. This is I go through each of the seven portals with prayers, scriptures, healthy foods to eat, uh, anointing oil recipe for each one. Ooh, it's fun. Okay. There's a whole lot of goodness out there. And I want to give these to you, Annie.